Last time on King Lear. Seek out the traitor Gloucester. Hang him instantly. Pluck out his eyes. What? What means, your graces? Where hast thou sent the king? To Dover. Because I would not see thy cruel nails pluck out his poor old eyes. But I shall see the wing adventures o'ertake such children. See it, shalt thou never. Hold your hand, my lord. I have served you ever since I was a child. But better service have I never done you than now to bend you home. My villain! All dark and comfortless. Where's my son, Edmund? Go thrust him out at gates and let him smell his way to Dover. King Lear by William Shakespeare. Adapted for audio and directed by Daniel G. Hussan. Episode 3, The Heath. Enter Edgar. Yet better thus, and known to be contemned and still contemned and flattered. To be worst, the lowest and most dejected thing of fortune, stands still in esperance, lives not in fear. The lamentable change is from the best, the worst returns to laughter. Welcome, then, thou unsubstantial heir that I embrace. The wretch that thou hast blown unto the worst owes nothing to thy blast. But who comes here? Enter Gloucester, led by an old man. My father? Poorly led? World, world, oh, world. But that thy strange mutations make us hate thee. Life would not yield to age. Oh, my good lord. I have been your tenant and your father's tenant these fourscore years. Away, get thee away. Good friend, be gone. Thy comforts can do me no good at all. Thee, they may hurt. You cannot see your way. I have no way, and therefore want no eyes. I stumbled when I saw. How now? Who's there? Aha, tis poor mad Tom. Fellow, we're ghost. Is it a beggar, man? Mad mad and beggar, too. He has some reason, else he could not beg. In the last night's storm, I such a fellow saw, which made me think a man a worm. My son came then into my mind. And yet my mind was then scarce friends with him. I've heard more since. As flies to wanton boys are we to the gods. They kill us for their sport. Bless thee, master. Is that the naked fellow? Aye, my lord. Get thee away. If for my sake thou wilt o'ertake us hence a mile or twain in the way toward Dover, do it for ancient love and, and bring some covering for this naked soul, which I'll entreat to lead me. Alack, sir, he is mad. Tis the time's plague when mad men lead the blind. Do as I bid thee, or rather, do thy pleasure. Above the rest, be gone. I'll bring him the best peril that I have. Come on to what will. Mm. Sirrah, uh, naked fellow. Poor Tom's a cold. Uh, come hither, fellow. Bless thy sweet eyes, they bleed. Knowst thou the way to Dover? Both stile and gate, horseway and footpath. Poor Tom hath been scared out of his good wits. Bless thee, good man's son, from the foul fiend. Here, take this purse. Thou whom the heaven's plagues have humbled to all strokes, dost thou know, Dover? Aye, master. There is a cliff, whose high and bending head looks fearfully in the confined deep. Bring me but to the very brim of it, and I'll repair the misery thou dost bear with something rich about me. From that place I shall no leading need. Give me thy arm. Poor Tom shall lead thee.
outside Albany's palace, enter Goneril and Edmund. Welcome, my lord. I marvel our mild husband not met us on the way. Enter Oswald. Now where's your master? Madam, within, but never man so changed. I told him of the army that was landed. He smiled at it. I told him you were coming. His answer was, the worse. Of Gloucester's treachery and of the loyal service of his son, when I informed him, then he called me sot and told me that I had turned the wrong side out. What most he should dislike seems pleasant to him, what like offensive. Then shall you go no further. It is the cowish terror of his spirit that dares not undertake. He'll not feel wrongs which tie him to an answer. Our wishes on the way may prove effects. Back, Edmund, to my brother. Hasten his musters and conduct his powers. I must change arms at home and give the distaff into my husband's hands. This trusty servant shall pass between us. Ere long you are like to hear, if you dare venture in your own behalf, a mistress's command. Wear this, spare speech, decline your head. This kiss, if it durst speak, would stretch thy spirits up into the air. Conceive and fare thee well. Yours in the ranks of death. My most dear Gloucester. Ah, oh, the difference of man and man. To thee a woman's services are due. My fool usurps my body. Madam, here comes my lord. I have been worth the whistle. Oh, Goneril, you are not worth the dust which the rude wind blows in your face. No more, the text is foolish. Wisdom and goodness to the vile seem vile. Filths savor but themselves. What have you done? Tigers, not daughters, what have you performed? Milk-livered man, thou bearst a cheek for blows, a head for wrongs. Who hast not in thy brows an eye discerning thine honor from thy suffering? Where's thy drum? France spreads his banners in our noiseless land, whilst thou, a moral fool, sit still and cries, Alack, why does he so? Worked my fitness to let these hands obey my blood, they are apt enough to dislocate and tear thy flesh and bones. However, thou art a fiend. A woman's shape doth shield thee. Marry your manhood, Mew. Enter messenger. Oh, my good lord, the Duke of Cornwall's dead. Slain by his servant, going to put out the other eye of Gloucester. Gloucester's eyes? A servant that he bred, thrilled with remorse, opposed against the act, bending his sword to his great master. This shows you are above, you justicers, that these are neither crimes so speedily convenge. But oh, poor Gloucester, lost he his other eye? Both. Both, my lord. A road near Dover. Enter Cordelia, gentlemen, and soldiers. A sentry sent forth. Search every acre in the high-grown field and bring him to our eye. What can man's wisdom in the restoring his bereaved sense? Seek, seek for him, lest his ungoverned rage dissolve the life that wants the means to lead it. The British powers are marching hitherward. Tis known. Our preparation stands in expectation of them. No blown ambition doth our arms incite, but love, dear love, and our aged father's right. Gloucester's former castle. Enter Regan and Oswald. But are my brother's powers set forth? Aye, madam. Himself in person there? Madam, with much ado. Your sister is the better soldier. Lord Edmund spake not with your lord at home? No, madam. What might import my sister's letter to him? I know not, lady. Faith, he is posted hence on serious matter. It was great ignorance Gloucester's eyes being out to let him live. Where he arrives, he moves all hearts against us. Edmund, I think, is gone in pity of his misery to dispatch his knighted life. Moreover, to decry the strength of the enemy. I must needs after him, madam, with my letter. Our troops set forth tomorrow. Stay with us. 
The ways are dangerous. I may not, madam. My lady charged my duty in this business. Why should she write to Edmund? Might not you transport her purposes by word? The like, some things, I know not what. I'll love thee much. Let me unseal the letter. Madam, I had rather... I know your lady does not love her husband. I am sure of that. And at her late being here, she gave strange Eliads and most speaking looks to noble Edmund. I know you are of her bosom. I, madam. I speak in understanding. You are. I know it. Therefore, I do advise you take this note. My lord is dead. Edmund and I have talked, and more convenient is he for my hand than for your lady's. You may gather more. If you do find him, pray you give him this. So, fare you well. If you do chance to hear of that blind traitor, preferment falls on him that cuts him off. The Countryside, Not the Cliffs of Dover. Enter Gloucester and Edgar. When shall I come to the top of that same hill? You do climb up it now. Look how we labor. Methinks the ground is even. Horrible, Steve. Hark. Do you hear the sea? No, truly. Why then your other senses grow imperfect by your eye's anguish. So may it be indeed. Methinks thy voice is altered, and thou speak'st in better phrase and matter than thou didst. You're much deceived, and nothing am I changed but in my garments. Methinks you're better spoken. Come on, sir. Here's the place. Stand still. How fearful and dizzy tis to cast one's eyes so low. The crows and chose that wing the midway air show scarce so gross as beetles. Halfway down hangs one that gathers samphire. Dreadful trade. The fishermen that walk upon the beach appear like mice. I I'll look no more, lest my brain turn and the deficient sight topple down headlong. S set me where you stand. Give me your hand. You are now within a foot of the extreme verge. For all beneath the moon would I not leap upright. Let go of my hand. Here, friends, another purse. In it a jewel, well worth a poor man's taking. Fairies and gods prosper it with thee. Go thou further off. Bid me farewell, and let me hear thee going. Now fare you well, good sir. With all my heart. Why do I trifle thus with his despair is done to cure it? Oh, you mighty gods! This world I do renounce, and in your sights shake patiently my great affliction off. If I could bear it longer, and not fall to quarrel with your great opposeless wills, my snuff and loathed part of nature should burn itself out. If Edgar live, oh, bless him. Now, fellow, fare thee well! Gone, sir, farewell! Ho, oh, you, sir! Friend, hear you! Sir, speak! Thus might he pass indeed, yet he revives. What are you, sir? Away, and let me die! Hadst thou been aught but gossamer, feathers, air, so many fathom down precipitating, thou'dst shivered like an egg. But thou dost breathe, hast heavy substance, bleats not, speak'st, art sound, ten mast at each make not the altitude which thou hast perpendicularly fell. Thy life's a miracle. Speak again. But have I fallen or no? From the dread summit of this chalky bourne, look up a height. The shrill gorged lark so far cannot be seen or heard. Do, but look up. Alack, I have no eyes. Is wretchedness deprived that benefit to end itself by death? Up. So, how is it? Feel you your legs? You stand? Too well. Too well. But who comes here? Enter Lear. No, they cannot touch me for coining. I am the king himself. Nature's above art in that respect. There's your press money. That fellow handles his bow like a crow keeper. 
Draw me a clothier's yard. Bring up the brown bills. Oh, well, flown bird. In the clout, in the clout. Ha-ha! Give the word. Sweet marjoram. Pass. I know that voice. <laughs> Goneril with a white beard? They flattered me like a dog and told me I had the white hairs in my beard ere the black ones were there. They told me I was everything. Tis a lie. I am not ague-proof. That trick of the voice I do well remember. It's not the king. Aye, every inch a king. When I do stare, see how the subject quakes. I pardon that man's life. What was thy cause? Adultery? Thou shalt not die. Die for adultery? No. The wren goes to it, and the small gilded fly does leisure in my sight. Let copulation thrive, for Gloucester's bastard son was kinder to his father than my daughters got tween the lawful sheets. To its luxury, pell mell, for I lack soldiers. Behold yon simpering dame, whose face between her forks presages snow that minces virtue and does shake the head of, to hear of pleasure's name. The fit you, nor the soiled horse, go to it with a more riotous appetite. Down from the waist, they are centaurs, though women all above. But to the girdle do the gods inherit, beneath is all the fiends. There's hell, there's darkness, there is the sulfurous pit, burning, scalding stench, consumption, fie, 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 pa, pa. Give me an ounce of civet, good apothecary. Sweeten my imagination. There's money for thee. Oh, let me kiss thy hand. Let me wipe it first. It smells of mortality. Oh, ruined piece of nature. This great world shall wear out to naught. Dost thou know me? I remember thine eyes well enough. Dost thou squinty at me? Read thou this challenge. Mark but the penning of it. Were all thy letters sons I could not see. I would not take this from report. It is, and my heart breaks at it. Read. What? With a case of eyes. Oh, are you there with me? No eyes in your head, no no money in your purse. Your eyes are in a heavy case, your purse in a light, yet you see how this world goes. I see it feelingly. What? Art mad? A man may see how this world goes with no eyes. Get the glass eyes, and like a scurvy politician, seem to see the things thou dost not. Now, 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 now! Oh, matter and impertinency mixed. Reason in madness. If thou wilt weep, my fortunes take my eyes. I know thee well enough. Thy name is Gloucester. Thou must be patient. We came crying hither. Thou knowst the first time that we smell the air, we wail and cry. I will preach to thee. Alack, alack the day. When we are born, we cry that we are come to this great stage of fools. Oh, this is a good block. If it were a delicate stratagem to shoe a troop of horses with felt, I'll put in proof. And when I have stolen upon these son-in-laws, then kill, 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 kill! Enter doctor and attendants. Oh, here he is. Lay hand upon him. Sir, your most dear daughter... No rescue? What? A prisoner? I am even the natural fool of fortune. Use me well. You shall have ransom. Let me have surgeons. I am cut to the brains. You shall have anything. Come, come, I am a king. Masters, know you that. You are a royal one, and we obey you. And there's life in it? Come and you get it. You shall get it by running. Sa, 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 sa. A sight most pitiful in the meanest wretch. Past speaking of in a king. Thou hast a daughter who redeems nature from the general curse which twain have brought her to. Hail, gentle sir. Sir, speed you. What's your will? Do you hear aught, sir, of a battle toward? Most sure and vulgar. Everyone hears that which can distinguish sound. But by your favor, how near's the other army? Near and on speedy foot. The main decry stands on the hourly thought. 
I thank you, sir. That's all. Though that the queen on special cause is here, her army is moving on. I thank you, sir. You ever gentle gods take my breath from me. Let not my worser spirit tempt me again to die before you please. Well, pray you, father. Now, good sir, what are you? A most poor man, made tame to fortune's blows, who by the art of known and feeling sorrows am pregnant to good pity. Give me your hand. I'll lead you to some biding. Hearty thanks. Enter Oswald. That eyeless head of thine was first framed flesh to raise my fortunes. Thou old unhappy traitor, briefly thyself remember. The sword is out that must destroy thee. Now let thy friendly hand put strength enough to it. Edgar steps forward. Wherefore, bold peasant, darest thou support a published traitor? Slave, thou hast slain me. Villain, take my purse, and give the letters which thou findst about me to Edmund, Earl of Gloucester. I know thee well, a serviceable villain, as duteous to the vices of thy mistress as badness would desire. What? Is he dead? Sit you down, father. Rest you. Let's see these pockets. The letters that he speaks of may be my friends. He's dead. I am only sorry he had no other deathsman. Let us see. Edmund, let our reciprocal vows be remembered. You have many opportunities to cut him off. If your will want not, time and place will be fruitfully offered. There is nothing done if he return the conqueror. Then am I the prisoner and his bed my jail. From the loathed warmth whereof deliver me and supply the place for your labor. Your wife, so I would say, affectionate servant Goneril. Oh, indistinguished space of woman's will! A plot upon her virtuous husband's life! And the exchange, my brother? Here in the sands thee I'll rake up, the post unsanctified of murderous lechers. And in the mature time, with this ungracious paper, strike the sight of the death-practiced duke. For him tis well that of thy death and business I can tell. The king is mad. How stiff is my vile sense that I stand up and have ingenious feeling of my huge sorrows. Better I were distract. So should my thoughts be severed from my griefs, and woes by wrong imaginations lose the knowledge of themselves. Give me your hand. Far off methinks I hear the beaten drum. Come, father. I'll bestow you with a friend. The French Camp. Enter Cordelia, Kent, Doctor, and a Gentleman. O oh, thou good Kent, how shall I live and work to match thy goodness? My life will be too short, and every measure fail me. To be acknowledged, madam, is or paid. All my reports go with the modest truth, nor more, nor cut but so. Be better suited. These weeds are memories of those worser hours. I prithee put them off. Pardon, dear madam. Yet to be known shortens my maid intent. My boon I make it that you know me not till time and I think meet. Then be it so, my good lord. How does the king? Madam, sleep still. So please your majesty that we may wake the king. He hath slept long. Be governed by your knowledge and proceed in the sway of your own will. Is he arrayed? Enter Lear, carried by servants. I, madam, in the heaviness of sleep, we put fresh garments on him. Oh, my dear father, restoration hang thy medicine on my lips and let this kiss repair those violent harms that my two sisters have in thy reverence made. <sighs> he wakes. Speak to him. Madam, do you. Tis fittest. 
How does my royal lord? How fares your majesty? You do me wrong to take me out of the grave. Thou art a soul in bliss, but I am bound upon a wheel of fire that mine own tears do scald like molten lead. Sir, do you know me? You are a spirit, I know. Where did you die? Still, still far wide. Where have I been? Where am I, fair daylight? I am mightily abused. I should even die with pity to see another thus. I know not what to say. I will not swear these are my hands. Let's see. I feel this pinprick. Would I were assured of my condition. Oh, look upon me, sir, and hold your hand in benediction o'er me. No, sir, you must not kneel. Pray do not mock. I'm a very foolish, fond old man, fourscore and upward, not an hour more nor less. And to deal plainly, I fear I am not in my perfect mind. Methinks I should know you and know this man, yet I am doubtful, for I am mainly ignorant what place this is, and all the skill I have remembers not these garments, nor I know not how or where I did lodge last night. Do not laugh at me, for as I am a man, I think this lady to be my child, Cordelia. And so I am. I am. Be your tears wet. Yes, faith, I pray weep not. If you have poison for me, I will drink it. I know you do not love me for your sisters have, as I do remember, done me wrong. You have some cause. They have not. No cause. No cause. Am I in France? In your own kingdom, sir. Do not abuse me. Be comforted, good madam. The great rage, you see, is killed in him. Desire him to go in. Will it please your highness walk? You must bear with me. Pray you now forget and forgive. I am old and foolish. Hold it true, sir, that the Duke of Cornwall was so slain? Most certain, sir. Who is conductor of his people? As tis said, the bastard son of Gloucester. They say Edgar, his banished son, is with the Earl of Kent in Germany. Report is changeable. Tis time to look about. The powers of the kingdom approach apace. The arbitrament is likely to be bloody. Fare you well, sir. My point and period will be thoroughly wrought, or well or ill, as this day's battles fought. The British camp. Enter Edmund, Regan, and soldiers. Know of the Duke if his last purpose hold, or whether since he is advised by aught to change the course. He's full of alteration and self-reproving. Bring his constant pleasure. Our sister's man is certainly miscarried. Tis to be doubted, madam. Now, sweet lord, you know the goodness I intend upon you. Tell me but truly, but then speak the truth. Do you not love my sister? In honored love. But have you never found my brother's way to the forfended place? No, by mine honor, madam. I never shall endure her. Dear my lord, be not familiar with her. Fear me not, she and the duke, her husband. Enter Albany, Goneril, and soldiers. I had rather lose the battle than that sister should loosen him and me. Our very loving sister will be met. Sir, this I heard. The king is come to his daughter, with others whom the rigor of our state forced to cry out. Why is this reasoned? Combine together against the enemy, for these domestic and particular broils are not the question here. Let's then determine with the Ancient of War on our proceeding. Sister, you'll go with us? No. Tis most convenient. Pray, go with us. Oh, I know the riddle. I will go. 
Enter Edgar. If e'er your grace had speech with men so poor, hear me one word. I'll overtake you. Speak. Before you fight the battle, ope this letter. If you have victory, let the trumpet sound for him that brought it. Wretched though I seem, I can produce a champion that will prove what is avouched there. If you miscarry, your business of the world hath so an end, and machination ceases. Fortune love you. Stay, till I have read the letter. I was forbid it. When time shall serve, let but the herald cry, and I'll appear again. I fear thee well. I will overlook thy paper. Enter Edmund. The enemy's in view. Draw up your powers. To both these sisters I have sworn my love, each jealous of the other as the stung are of the adder. And which of them shall I take? Both? One? Or neither? Neither can be enjoyed if both remain alive. To take the widow exasperates, makes mad her sister Goneril, and hardly shall I carry out my side, her husband being alive. Now then, we'll use his countenance for the battle which, being done, let her who would be rid of him devise his speedy taking off. As for the mercy which he intends to Lear and to Cordelia, the battle done, and they within our power, shall never see his pardon. For my state stands on me to defend, not to debate. The Battlefield. Enter Gloucester and Edgar. Here, Father. Take the shadow of this tree for your good host. Pray that the right may thrive. If ever I return to you again, I'll bring you comfort. Grace, go with you, sir. Away, old man, give me thy hand, away! King Lear hath lost, he and his daughter Tain. Give me thy hand, come on! No further, sir. A man may rot even here. What, in ill thoughts again? Men must endure their going hence, even as they're coming hither. Ripeness is all, come on! The British camp. Enter Edmund, Lear, and Cordelia held captive, and soldiers. Some officers take them away. Good guard until their greater pleasures first be known that are to censure them. We are not the first who with best meaning have incurred the worst. For thee, oppressed king, I am cast down. Myself else could outfrown false fortune's frown. Shall we not see these daughters and these sisters? No, no, no! Come, let's away to prison. We two alone will sing like birds in the cage. When thou dost ask me blessing, I'll kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness. So we'll live and pray and sing and tell old tales and laugh at gilded butterflies and hear poor rogues talk of court news and we'll talk with them too who loses and who wins, who's in, who's out, and take upon the mystery of things as if we were God's spies. And we'll wear out in a walled prison packs and sects of great ones that ebb and flow by the moon. Take them away. Upon such sacrifices, my Cordelia, the gods themselves throw incense. Have I caught thee? He that parts us shall bring a brand from heaven and fire us hence like foxes. Wipe thine eyes. 
The good years shall devour them flesh and fell, ere they shall make us meet. We'll see them starve first. Come. Come hither, Captain. Hark. Take thou this note. Go follow them to prison. One step I have advanced thee. If thou dost as this instructs thee, thou dost make thy way to noble fortunes. And know now this, that men are as a time is. To be tender-minded does not become a sword. Thy great employment will not bear question. Either say thou do it, or thrive by other means. I'll do it, my lord. About it, and right happy when thou hast done. I cannot draw a cart, nor eat dried oats. If it be man's work, I'll do it. Enter Albany, Goneril, Regan, and soldiers. Sir, you have showed today your valiant strain, and fortune led you well. You have the captives who were the opposites of this day's strife. I do require them of you, so to use them as we shall find their merits, and our safety may equally determine. Sir, I thought it fit to send the old and miserable king to some retention and appointed guard, whose age had charms in it, whose title more to pluck the common bosom on his side and turn our impressed lances in our eyes which do command them. With him I sent the queen. My reason all the same, and they are ready tomorrow or at further space to appear where you shall hold your session. The question of Cordelia and her father requires a fitter place. Sir, by your patience, I hold you but a subject of this war, not as a brother. He led our powers, bore the commission of my place and person, the which immediacy may well stand up and call itself your brother. Not so hot. In his own grace he doth exalt himself more than in your addition. In my rights, by me invested, he compares the best. That were the most if he should husband you. Jesters do oft prove prophets. Holla, holla! That I that told you so looked but a squint. Lady... I am not well, else I should answer from a full-flowing stomach. General, take thou my soldiers, prisoners, patrimony. Dispose of them, of me. The walls is thine. Witness the world that I create thee here, my lord and master. Mean you to enjoy him? The let alone lies not in your goodwill. Nor in thine, lord. Half-blooded fellow, yes. Let the drum strike, and prove my title thine. Stay yet, hear reason. Edmund, I arrest thee on capital treason, and in thine attaint this gilded serpent. <laughs> An interlude. Thou art armed, Gloucester. Let the trumpets sound. If none appear to prove upon thy person thy heinous, manifest and many treasons, there is my pledge. I'll make it on thy heart. Ere I taste bread, thou art in nothing less than I have here proclaimed thee. There's my exchange. What in the world he is that names me traitor? Villain-like, he lies. Call by the trumpet. He that dares approach on him, on you, who not, I will maintain my truth and honor firmly. A herald, ho! My sickness grows upon me. She is not well. Convey her to my tent. Come hither, herald. Let the trumpet sound, and read out this. Sound trumpet. If any man of quality or degree within the lists of the army will maintain upon Edmund, supposed Earl of Gloucester, that he is a manifold traitor, let him appear by the third sound of the trumpet. He is bold in his defense. Again. Again. Enter Edgar. Ask him his purposes, why he appears upon this call of the trumpet. What are you, your name, your quality, and why you answer this present summons? No, my name is lost. By treason's tooth bare gnawn and canker bit. Yet am I noble as the adversary I come to cope. Which is that adversary? What's he that speaks for Edmund? Earl of Gloucester. Himself. What sayest thou to him? 
draw thy sword, that if my speech offend a noble heart, thy arm may do thee justice. Thou art a traitor, false to thy gods, thy brother, and thy father. Back do I toss these treasons to thy head. The sword of mine shall give them instant way where they shall rest forever. Trumpets, speak! This is practice, Gloucester. By the law of war, thou wast not bound to answer an unknown opposite. Thou art not vanquished, but cousined and beguiled. Shut your mouth, dame, or with this paper shall I stop it? Hold, sir. Thou worse than any name, read thine own evil. O oh, tearing lady, I perceive you know it. Say if I do, the laws are mine, not thine. Who can arraign me for it? Most monstrous, O. Oh. Knowest thou this paper? Ask me not what I know. Go after her. She's desperate. Govern her. What you have charged me with, that have I done, and more, much more. But what art thou? I am no less in blood than thou art, Edmund. If more, the more thou hast wronged me. My name is Edgar and thy father's son. The gods are just, and of our pleasant vices make instruments to plague us. The dark and vicious place where thee he got cost him his eyes. Thou hast spoken right. It is true. The wheel is come full circle. I am here. Methought thy very gate did prophesy a royal nobleness. I must embrace thee. Let sorrow split my heart if ever I did hate thee or thy father. Worthy prince, I know it. Where have you hid yourself? How have you known the miseries of your father? By nursing them, my lord. List a brief tale, and when tis told, oh, that my heart would burst. The bloody proclamation to escape that followed me so near, oh, our lives' sweetness. That we, the pain of death, would hourly die rather than die at once. Taught me to shift into a madman's rags, to assume the semblance that very dogs disdained. And in this habit met my father with his bleeding rings, their precious stones new lost, became his guide, led him, begged for him, saved him from despair, never oh, fault, revealed myself unto him until some half hour passed, when I was armed. Not sure, though hoping of this good success, I asked his blessing and from first to last told him our pilgrimage. But his flawed heart, alack, too weak the conflict to support, twixt two extremes of passion, joy, and grief, burst smilingly. The speech of yours hath moved me, and shall perchance do good. But speak you on. You look as you had something more to say. If there be more, or woeful, hold it in, for I am almost ready to dissolve hearing of this. This would have seemed a period to such as love, not sorrow, but another, to amplify too much, would make much more and top extremity. Whilst I was big in clamor, came therein a man who, having seen me in my worst state, shunned my abhorred society. But then, finding who twas that so endured, with his strong arms, he fastened on my neck and bellowed out as he burst heaven, threw him on my father, told the most piteous tale of Lear and him that ever ear received, which, in recounting, his grief grew puissant, and the strings of life began to crack. Twice then the trumpets sounded, and there I left him, tranced. But who was this? Kent, sir. The banished Kent, who in disguise followed his enemy king and did him service improper for a slave. Enter gentlemen. Help! Help! Oh, help! What kind of help? Speak, man. 
What means this bloody knife? Tis hot. It smokes. It came even from the heart of... Oh, she's dead. Who dead? Speak, man. Your lady, sir, your lady. And her sister by her is poisoned. She confesses it. I was contracted to them both. All three now marry in an instant. Here comes Kent. Enter Kent. Produce the bodies, be they alive or dead. This judgment of the heavens that makes us tremble touches us not with pity. Oh, is this he? The time will not allow the compliment which very manners urges. I am come to bid my king and master I good night. Is he not here? Great thing of us forgot. Speak, Edmund, where is the king? And where's Cordelia? Goneril and Regan's bodies are brought out. Seest thou this object, Kent? Alack, why thus? Yet Edmund was beloved. The one the other poisoned for my sake, and after slew herself. Even so, cover their faces. I, I, I pant for life. Some good I, I mean to do. Quickly, send. Be brief in it. To the castle, for my writ is on the life of Lear and on Cordelia. Nay, send in time. Run. Run, oh, run! To who, my lord? Who has the office? Send thy token of reprieve. Well thought on. Take my sword, give it to the captain. Haste thee for thy life. He hath commissioned from thy wife and me to hang Cordelia in the prison and to lay the blame upon her own despair that she fordid herself. The gods defend her. Bear him hence a while. Enter Lear with Cordelia in his arms. Howl, howl, howl! Oh, you are men of stones! Had I your tongues and eyes, I'd use them so that heaven's vault should crack. She's gone forever. I know when one is dead and when one lives. She's dead as earth. Lend me a looking glass. If that her breath will mist or stain the stone, by then she lives. Is this the promised end? Or image of that horror. Fall and cease. This feather stirs. She lives. If it be so, it is a chance which does redeem all sorrows that ever I have felt. Oh, my good master. Prithee away. Tis noble Kent, your friend. A plague upon you. Murderers, traitors all. I might have saved her. Now she's gone forever. Cordelia, Cordelia, stay a little. <laughs> what is thou sayst? Her voice was ever soft, gentle, and low. An excellent thing in woman. I killed the slave that was a-hanging thee. Tis true, my lords, he did. Did I not, fellow? I have seen the day with my good biting falchion. I would have made him skip. I am old now, and these same crosses spoil me. Who are you? Mine eyes are not the best, I'll tell you straight. This is a dull sight. Are you not, Kent? The same. Your servant, Kent. He's a good fellow, I can tell you that. He'll strike, and quickly, too. He's dead and rotten. No, my good lord, I am the very man. I'll see that straight. That from your first of difference and decay have followed your sad steps. You are welcome hither. Nor no man else. Oh, cheerless, dark, and deadly. Your eldest daughters have fordone themselves and desperately are dead. Aye. So I think. He knows not what he says. Vain is it that we present us to him. Very bootless. Edmund is dead, my lord. That's but a trifle here. You lords and noble friends know our intent. What comfort to this great decay may come shall be applied. For us, we will resign during the life of this old majesty to him our absolute power. Oh, see, see. And my poor fool is hanged. No. No, no, life? Why should a dog, a horse, a rat have life, and thou no breath at all? Thou come no more. Never, 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 never. Pray you undo this button. 
thank you, sir. Do you see this? Look on her. Look her lips. Look there. Look there. He faints. My lord. My lord. Break, heart, I prithee break. Look up, my lord. Vex not his ghost. Oh, let him pass. He hates him that would upon the rack of this tough world stretch him out longer. He is gone indeed. No wonder is he hath endured so long. We but usurped his life. Bear them from hence. Our present business is general woe. Friends of my soul, you twain rule in this realm, and the gored state sustain. I have a journey, sir, shortly to go. My master calls me. I must not say no. The weight of this sad time we must obey. Speak what we feel, not what we ought to say. The oldest hath borne most. We that are young shall never see so much, nor live so long.